It is my great pleasure to share with you our guest reader, Mr. Nick Offerman, and his participation in Bedtime Stories read by celebrities with Shambana Moms. Shambana Mom and super fan of Nick Offerman, Amy Armstrong, reached out to Japan House and asked if we could have Nick read a story. Nick, the consummate gentleman that he is, graciously agreed with one stipulation, that we select the story. To continue full circle, I reached out to Nick's mentor and former professor, Shozo Sato, and he selected tonight's story to align also with the culmination of Japan House's Children's Day activities. The story that Mr. Nick Offerman will be sharing with you is Kaguya Hime, or Taketori Monogatari, the tale of the bamboo cutter, which originated in the 10th century. Since then, the story has been told generation after generation in a variety of forms. In the 1980s, the story was released as a Japanese manga, an anime, and also a feature film known as The Princess from the Moon. In this contemporary iteration, a meteor falls into a bamboo forest and one of the meteor shards breaks off and a young baby girl was found inside. Nearby this crash site, a deep hole was carved where a spaceship had landed. At the end of this film, the spaceship comes back to Earth to collect the beautiful princess and returns her home to the moon. This was a very different version from the earlier versions of the story. However, the essence of the traditional story was similar to this contemporary movie in one key way, the showcasing of human desire to know what is beyond the earth, what exists on the dark side of the moon, what exists in the universe. Human desire to gain knowledge of the unknown is central to the Kagoya Hime story. In 2007, the Japanese space program even named one of their satellites Kaguya, which was launched and orbited to the moon. It was in 2013 when Studio Ghibli released the critically acclaimed animated fantasy drama, The Tale of the Princess Kaguya, which was adopted from this story. The legend of the bamboo cutter and the princess of the moon is not only illuminated with a strange and lunar beauty, but for many, it's one of the oldest works of science fiction corresponding with the Japanese spirit. With beings from another planet, it is a story of beauty, exile, belonging, and love. We hope you enjoy the reading of this epic tale. Takatori Monogatari, The Tale of the Bamboo Cutter. One day, while walking in the forest, an old bamboo cutter called Takatori no Okina, old man who harvests bamboo, came across a mysterious shining stalk of bamboo. When he cut it open, he was surprised to find an infant the size of his thumb sitting inside. The man and his wife, who had no children of their own, decided to raise the infant as their daughter naming her Nayotake no Kaguyahime, Shining Princess of the Young Bamboo. Now, from that moment on, every time the old man cut a stalk of bamboo, he found a small nugget of gold inside. The family became rich, and in the span of three months, Kaguyahime grew from a small baby into a woman of ordinary size and extraordinary beauty. At first, the old man tried to keep Kaguya Hime away from outsiders, but news of her beauty spread across the land, attracting many suitors who sought her hand in marriage. Among them were five nobles, who eventually persuaded the old man to tell Kaguya Hime to choose from among the five of them. Uninterested, Kaguya Hime devised five impossible tasks, agreeing to marry the noble who could bring her his specified item, the stone begging bowl of the Buddha, a jeweled branch from the island of Horai, the hide of a Chinese fire rat, a colored jewel from a dragon's neck, and a cowrie shell born from a swallow. Now, realizing the impossibility of his task, the first noble presented a fake stone bowl made from a blackened pot, but he was exposed, 
when Kaguya Hime noticed that it did not glow with a holy light. The second noble presented a branch crafted by the finest jewelers in the land, but his deception was revealed when the craftsmen arrived at Kaguya Hime's house to collect payment. The third noble was deceived by a merchant from China who sold him a false hide that burned when it was tested with fire, meaning it was clearly no Chinese fire rat. The fourth noble attempted to find a dragon at sea, but abandoned his plans after encountering a massive storm. The final noble fell from a great height when he tried to reach into a swallow's nest. After this, the Emperor of Japan came to see Kaguya Hime and, upon falling in love, asked her to marry him. Although he was not subjected to the impossible trials that had thwarted the nobles, Kaguya Hime rejected his request for marriage as well, telling him that she was not of his country and thus could not go to his palace with him. She stayed in contact with the emperor, but continued to rebuff his requests and marriage proposals. Three years passed as they continued to communicate by letter. That summer, whenever Kaguya Hime saw the full moon, her eyes filled with tears. Though her adoptive parents worried greatly and questioned her, she was unable to tell them what was wrong. Her behavior became increasingly erratic until she revealed that she was not of this world and must return to her people on the moon. The gold that the old man had found had been a stipend from the people of the moon sent to pay for Kaguya Hime's upkeep. As the day of her return to the moon approached, the emperor sent many guards to protect her from the moon people. But when an embassy of heavenly beings descended upon the bamboo cutter's house, the guards were blinded by a strange light. Kaguya Hime announced that though she loved her many friends on earth, she must return with the beings to her true home on the moon. She wrote sad notes of apology to her parents and to the emperor, then gave her parents her own robe as a memento. She then took a little of the elixir of immortality, attached it to her letter to the emperor, and gave it to a guard officer. As she handed it to him, a feather robe was placed on her shoulders, and all of her sadness and compassion for the people on earth were apparently forgotten. The entourage ascended into the sky, taking Kaguya Hime back to Tsuki no Miyako, the capital of the moon, and leaving her earthly foster parents in tears. The parents became very sad and were soon put to sit, to sick beds. They were in bed sick. The officer returned to the emperor with the items Kaguya Hime had given him as her last mortal act, and reported to the emperor what had happened. Well, he read her letter and was overcome with sadness. He asked his servants, which mountain is the closest place to heaven? To which one replied, the great mountain of Suruga province. The emperor ordered his men to take the letter to the summit of that mountain and burn it, in the hope that his message would reach the distant princess. The men were also commanded to burn the elixir of immortality, since the emperor did not wish to live forever without being able to see her. His men accepted the commands and climbed the mountain to the top and performed the tasks of burning both items. They then gave the name Fuji to the mountain, which is the word for immortality. To this day, 
The clouds that surround Mount Fuji are believed to be the smoke from the burning of the gifts from Kaguya-hime. The end.